Just a quick note before we get into this video. This video is only relevant to you if you are doing the DJI Cadex Vista version of the JB Zylo budget build. If you're doing the analog version, there's nothing in here for you. Go back to the playlist and find the next video that relates to the analog build. What I want to do first is take a look at the things you're going to get if you order the Cadex Vista version that the analog folks didn't get. Obviously, you're going to get the Cadex Vista instead of the uh, analog camera and video transmitter. You're going to get a couple of camera plates and you're going to get this kit, which has the 3D printed antenna holder for the Vista and some standoffs and some mounting hardware. And the reason you need different standoffs is that the standoffs that come with the Freakstyle frame are too small. They're too short to hold the Vista. So we're going to need to install the longer standoffs that come with in a separate bag with the kit. So now all the smaller standoffs have been removed and replaced with the larger standoffs. And we'll just set those aside. Now the quadcopter that I'm working with is actually my finished Freakstyle build and I've kind of taken it apart and taken some parts out of it to kind of rewind it back to the point where I think you're going to be at if you're going through this build. I do have the camera header still installed so let's just go ahead and desolder that because we're not going to be using the analog camera header when we're using the Cadex Vista and you may not even have installed this at all if you were paying attention when you went through the, the very first install. The other thing you're going to notice is that I have my receiver installed, my RXSR receiver. And the reason that's installed is because currently I am flying this quadcopter using the FreeSky X9 Lite controller. But I'm going to install this with the assumption that we're going to be using the DJI controller. And the main reason I'm going to do that is because I haven't documented that yet. So I want to be able to document it for you. So I'm going to go ahead and uninstall this RXSR receiver as well. You wouldn't have installed it at all. Or if you are going to be using the FreeSky receiver, then you are going to leave it installed. Here's the Cadex Vista, and I want you to get this wire harness here, and we're going to start prepping that. The Cadex Vista wire harness comes with a plug, and if our flight controller had a plug pre-installed for the DJI system, all we would have to do is plug this into the flight controller, and so we still have to solder these ends to the Vista, but we would be good to go. Unfortunately, the Xylo Stax flight controller does not have a DJI plug, so we're going to need to just cut this end off and direct solder both ends of the wires. Now I'm going to take the Cadex Vista, I'm actually going to flip it upside down so I get better access to these solder pads right here. In case you're wondering, this blue putty is called Blue Tack. Uh, and you can buy it on hardware, drugstore, hardware store, Amazon, uh, and it's super useful in situations like this for holding stuff in place while you're soldering. The pads on the Vista are voltage, ground, RX, TX, ground, and S bus. And we're gonna be using all of those pads. If you are not using the DJI controller, but instead you're using like the X9 Lite or some other controller, then you are not going to deal with the S bus and the second ground pad. Uh, but we're going to solder all of those up. Also, don't let the fact that there's already solder on your VBAT and ground pad freak you out. They do that at the factory to test it. They have to solder to it to test it. So I'm going to tin each of these pads. And my soldering is always worse on camera because I can't get close. I need a magnifier. I really need a magnifier. I can't get my face close down in there to see what I'm doing, so, oops. And we're going to take our wires and we're going to strip and tin these wires. And I'm not actually sure if you've seen this earlier in the tutorial or whether you came straight here and you haven't seen this yet. So I'll just show you once. We're just going to take the wire with your fingernail. You can just strip off a little bit of the insulation. You're then going to pinch it and twist it to twist it into a nice bundle. And then a little trick, you put the soldering iron down on the table. Don't put the hot part of the soldering iron on the table, just the base, just the handle. And uh, then you just get a little fresh solder on there to tin that wire. And then we are going to just cut this to about, about two millimeters length. And we're going to do that for all these wires. Once I've got the wires prepped, I'm going to get my tweezers out and I'm going to solder the wires up. It's a little tricky to get your soldering iron in. You kind of need to bring the soldering iron in at an angle to get the pad and the wire in. And I'm going to show you how I do it, but it's, this is going to be a little tricky if it's your first time out the gate. But hey, that's what you got to do if you want that DJI goodness.
And when all is said and done, this is where you should be. Um, you're going to definitely want to double check this pin out, especially the red and black wires. The red should go to V, black should go to G. If you get any of the other wires wrong, nothing bad will happen. You just it won't work. But if you mess up the voltage wire, you could fry it. You don't want that. The next thing I want to do is install the antenna on the Vista. And the reason I want to do this is that getting at this UFL connector is a little tricky once it's already installed. It's just easier to do when you're outside of the quad. I'm going to take this 3D printed adapter that comes with the Xylo build, and I'm going to feed the antenna down through there. Requires just a little bit of pressure. It's going to be a friction fit. Well, that's nice, I guess. Okay. Uh, for this particular antenna holder, we do not need to use this plastic clip. You can remove that. Um, that would be used for a different kind of antenna mount. And then I'm going to take a 1.5 millimeter hex driver and I'm just going to remove this screw entirely. In theory, you can do this without removing the screw, but I've always found it really difficult and it's just easier to just take the screw out. Then we're going to slide this retaining tab out and getting it out is easy. Getting it back on without removing the screw is a real pain. We're going to take the antenna and we're just going to pop it down onto that UFL connector. There we go. To get the retaining bar back on, I'm first going to put it underneath this little pin right here. And then I'm going to slide it over and put the screw back on. So it's getting it back underneath that pin that's really tricky if you don't take this screw off. And on this side, it needs to go down and underneath this top plate. Yeah, so you can see I've got it slid underneath that top plate there. I'm just going to push that the rest of the way in. And you can see it's not quite lining up all the way, but as soon as I put the screw in, it'll all sort itself out. And that's how you want it to be, with one side underneath the pin right here, and one side underneath the screw right there. The next thing we're going to do is mount the Vista inside the quad. And in order to do that, I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to take these long M2 screws and I'm going to drop them into these four holes in the, uh, in the frame's bottom plate. Um, bear in mind we are using the inner set of holes, not the outer set. And then I'm going to mount the Vista and in order to keep them from falling out, you can just hold them on with your hands or maybe get like a little piece of tape and tape over them. Like, just like that. We'll kind of keep them in place while you're working. The Vista is going to get installed by passing those screws through these inner holes here. Uh, make sure you install it with the USB port up, the camera facing forward, and the wires and the antenna going out the back. And in my case, I have already installed the uh, capacitor and the XT60 wires as described in the previous video. Um, and this is going to get in the way just a little bit, but if we just lift the capacitor up slightly, it should go. Got it. I got it lined up. I'm going to try not to bump this camera wire too much. There we go. And let's see if I can get this down below the capacitor. There we go. That's out of the way. Nice. And you can see here sort of how they're laying with that capacitor just kind of rising above the top of the Vista. Next I'm going to take these little M2 nuts that came with the kit and I'm going to start to install them on the screws. I guess I'm going to need to take the tape off. Yeah, I wish it, I won't take the tape off yet. I'll just sort of use my finger to hold it as I get those screws started. Yeah, perfect. Once I got all four of those nuts on there, then the screws won't fall out. I'll remove that tape and I'll go ahead and tighten this down. When you tighten those nuts down, don't tighten the first one down all the way because the Vista can actually kind of cock to the side. So get them all, make sure the Vista sits flat and isn't under any tension when you tighten them down, but definitely make sure it also can't vibrate or move. 
I don't know if you're gonna receive these, but my kit also came with four of these little uh, rubber washers. And yeah, the, the original kit does use those here underneath the flight controller as spacers. Um, but my Vista kit came with four more and I have no idea what they're for, but I don't think they're used for anything. I'm just gonna save them for later for another project. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move the camera to the side so it's out of the way. I'm gonna lift the flight controller off very carefully so I don't pull or tug on this ESC plug. And I'm gonna flip it over. I can even set it on there upside down. I'm gonna tin this VBAT and ground pad. Uh, the, don't let the fact that they already have solder on there uh, concern you. I had done something else with this quadcopter in the meantime. And I'm gonna take my red and black wire from the Vista and solder them to the VBAT and ground. And actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna give them some twists together to keep them looking nice. Now I'm gonna flip that back over again on top and I can plug in the ESC connector again as well. Next, we're gonna take the white and yellow TX and RX wires and we're gonna solder them to this TX4 and RX4 pad right here. Uh, the white one is RX, which goes to TX. The yellow one is TX, which goes to RX. And again, I'm also gonna twist them together just to keep them neat looking. And then if you're using the DJI controller, we're gonna take the yellow and black S-Bus and ground wires and we're gonna solder them to the S-Bus and ground pad here. I've already tinned those, you can see from the fresh shiny solder. And just like the others, I'm gonna go ahead and twist them together before I solder them. Yellow goes to S-Bus, black goes to ground. And here is the beautiful result. Well, it's, it's kind of tangled up. I'm not sure you can see much going on, but that's how it looks. The next thing I'm gonna do is install this antenna mount on the rear standoffs. Um, just to kind of keep it out of the way while I'm working. And I think the nicest way to do that is gonna be just to rotate it in a circle to give a little twist and then stuff it down on top. It's got just a friction fit. Um, yeah, just like that. Yeah, seems good. The reason I like to twist it like that is it keeps it out of the way it keeps it tucked up in here versus kind of hanging out here in a U shape. Uh, but at the same time, a little sort of just a f half twist or a f maybe a full circle twist doesn't put any unnecessary tension on the wire. Uh, you don't want to you don't want to really twist or kink or put a lot of tension on that antenna wire. But this is a little half twist like this is no big deal. The next thing we're gonna do is mount the camera. And in order to do that, you're gonna use these two little rubber, I like to call them ears. I don't know, just seems like the right word for them. These two little rubber ears, they're gonna slide down over the front standoffs, and then you're gonna use the original screws that you took out of the DJI camera to screw through and into the camera, through the ears, and hold the camera on. There are a couple little gotchas here. Number one, when you install the ears, make sure you install the ears with the ear part on the outside. If you install them with the ear part on the inside, the camera will not fit in between the, the ears. And the other thing is when you screw to the camera, make sure you screw to the bottom of the two screw holes on the camera. Here's the top screw hole. We're not using that, we're using the bottom. And the reason for that is that it's gonna let the camera tilt back a little bit. You always want a little bit of up tilt on your FPV camera so that when the quadcopter pitches forward, you're not staring at the ground. After you install the camera, you're gonna wanna kinda wiggle left and right and get it centered up. And you can also push these up and down and get the get it level. I personally like to just get it so it's just barely not touching the bottom plate. You don't want it touching the bottom plate. It may pick up some vibration, but just have it low and level relative to the bottom plate. It looks pretty good to me. Next, we're gonna take these camera plates. Uh, and the first thing I wanna point out to you is that there is a top and a bottom to the camera plate. The bottom has a single tab the top has two tabs and that'll keep you from installing them upside down by accident. And those are gonna go to either side of the camera. Um, they're gonna, ah, oh, phooey. Um, I'm gonna need to raise the camera slightly. This, the little rubber ear needs to fit in this hole or otherwise they, they won't go in place. I'm just gonna raise that up just a little bit. 
Now, you may want to skip this step. And the reason for that is that these camera plates are going to protrude out the front of the quad just a little bit. And you can see it happening right here. And that's going to give a little more protection for the camera in the case of a front end impact. But you will see them slightly in the camera and it's going to reduce your feel, how much you can, your peripheral vision, if you will. Um, so some pilots would prefer to leave that off and take their chances. Some pilots would prefer to have it on. You can go either way. And of course, you can always change your mind later if you decide to. And at this point, the quad is basically done. Obviously, you're going to need to put the top plate back on and there may be a few other steps to do, like installing this battery pad those steps, the final steps for putting it back together are going to be back in the original assembly video. Um, but I'm going to leave it just like this because the next thing I'm going to do is take it over to the computer, do some beta flight setup and do some setup of the DJI software. And just in case anything has gone wrong, maybe you need to resolder something. It's nice to not have to take the top plate back off again. Um, that's how I approach most all of my builds. I don't button them up until the very end when I'm sure everything is working right. We're going to put that stuff in another video. At this point, this video is over. Go down to the video description. The playlist is in the video description and find the next video in the playlist that pertains to the DJI build. There's going to be other videos in that playlist that are for the people doing the original build with the analog gear, uh, but don't, you don't need those. Happy flying.